Hi, in this video I'm going to take you through some hints on how to accomplish milestone number two. So in our contacts app application, we are going to do coding. Milestone two says create the classes, properties, and methods for each of them. And then we're going to test them. So this is not quite yet a fully functional application, it's just a test script. So what we have to do first is code the app and it means implement all of the items except for the persistent storage. Good coding is also includes with good comments so make sure that it's written well and you can understand it later because we're going to be modifying things. Then we're going to run the app. So we will have a just a console app that will do a series of tests and when you're done you will have yourself um, a pretty good idea that if your app is going to work or not. Let me show you what I've built so far in my test app. So you can see I have a project here called Contact App 2. I think it's the second version that I've worked on. And I have a testing only script. I have the business service and all of the other projects or other classes in their proper folders. So to help guide you through some of the processes here in Milestone 2, I've created another document that might help you out. So step one is go through and create all the classes. And so you can see a folder structure that looks like this. Model is an important folder because it just shows you each of the items in the classes. Data access is usually a folder in your projects. Business service is the top level kind of the controller of the application. And then I have a testing script up here that I just put in the default package. We'll probably end up deleting testing later, but for right now it's important. So then you're going to have to go through and create the properties and the constructors for each of your classes, each of your items in the models folder. And so you can see if I were working on the base contact, I would to take all the properties that are in my class and make them a protected string item it looks like they're all strings and then have some getters and setters so the constructor is going to be the base constructor kind of the default that says here's the default data that gets put in as well as a parameterized constructor which allows you to send in the actual street and city and names of everything and so that's what most of your classes will look like. They'll have the two different constructors as well as the property names and then of course getters and setters. So another important part is the uh, extending of the base contact. So since there are business contacts and person contacts we will utilize all of the information that we created in the base contact. And so you can see in the constructor that we use the super constructor to first of all call the base contact and then we'll customize it with a few other things that you see in a business contact such as opening closing times and the URL etc. We're going to be printing a lot of these things so you're going to have to override the to string and the compare to methods for each of the classes. So if I say print a contact it should be able to print out a list of all of the elements that are in the contact. Once you have all that done, then you can move on to the address book, which is going to be a class that holds a list. And the list is all of the contacts in your app. It will include some of the methods of managing a list, such as searching and adding and deleting items from the list. So I'm going to make a special note here using uh, items called generics. So if you have overloaded methods, generics work better than just having multiple methods. And so some of the code that I'll include in this document will give you helpful hints on using generics since they might be new to you and you can see them in action here. So I won't go through this in the video, but there's certainly a lot of things here to read in a document that I will include as well. Data service, we're going to simply create an uh, interface for right now and it will have two methods for reading and writing all data. Then finally when we get to the end, we're going to test our application to see if we can actually create contacts and call the methods on those contacts. And so you'll get a, a list of things that you have to create. Now let me show you how that might work. So I'm going to bring open my testing only script here in Eclipse and you can see that I've created an outline of what I intend to do, so in some comments. So we're going to create some contacts and demonstrate the search function, demonstrate the delete function, call the methods such as email and text and others and then the open URL method on some of the business contacts. So the first thing I do is create a person contact P1 which is a default constructor and then print it out. Then the second thing is I create a more customized version of my contact and you can see that I'm providing 
the actual strings for each of these items and I print those out and then searching is demonstrated and deleting and then also the uh, interaction for the contacts for communications. So let's see what happens when I run it. So I'm going to move this uh, window up and you can see the results here. So I have two string methods obviously working. It's printing out in a nice format that shows me my contact information and let's see the new person object was just created. Now my list shows me that contact number 0 and contact 1 have been added to the list. Let's see, I did a search for the letter A and it says here I did find somebody and I found a couple of them. And then my methods down here for communication are simply things like I'm opening my page in Chrome and maybe making some phone calls and text messages as well. So the text version of our application is getting close. This first testing only script will prove that all of our classes are coded correctly and can do what they are supposed to do. And the next milestone will create an interactive application where the user has a menu to choose from and can actually enter his own choices of context. So for milestone number two, the deliverables on this assignment are to create all of the code. So a zip file will include your source code, your project. So we need a Word document that shows all of your design that you created in, this in the previous milestone. And then I want to see a Loom video or some other video such as uh, YouTube which will give me a idea of how your code is working. So you can demonstrate all of the different functions that are supposed to be in your classes. And so an uh, illustrated, uh, narrated video of your project at the end of Milestone 2.